Hey guys, we are at Cedia 2022. We're at Harmon Luxury Audio Group. I've got my friend Jim here. He's gonna tell us all about some really slick home theater products that you've got here at the show. Jim, thanks for having us. Tell us what we got going on here. Oh boy, we got all kinds of stuff here for everybody at the show. First of all, it's great to be back. Three yes. years, we haven't had a show. So for us, there's a lot of new products to show off. It's of course the focus here is custom integration, home theater products, and that's really what our focus here is the booth. Yeah. So, uh, behind us here, we've got the Arcam products, so some great two-channel pieces, but we're really showcasing the new AVRs here with HDMI 2.1 capability. So that's up here at the front. As we start moving further back into the booth, we got our new JBL architectural loudspeakers, and we got two, three new series of products happening there. The whole back of the booth dedicated to our JBL Synthesis Home Cinema line. I think yeah. most of the viewers are pretty familiar with that product. We've expanded the range both on the lower end, up on the flagship uh, half of the brand as well too. So we'll showcase some of that to you and show you some of the cool new products happening there. We've got some new JBL streaming audio loudspeakers that are happening and some of our classic loudspeakers up front. The L100, we've dressed that up in a new limited edition black edition. So there's some cool things happening and I'd like to take the time to show you and show everybody else kind of some of the cool things that are going on in the booth this year. Absolutely, man. So I love home theater. You guys love home theater. So maybe let's start right here with our cam. Tell us what we've got going on there. We'll step over here. All right. So, hey, Michael, let me show you what we got going on with our cam AVR products here at the show. So we're standing next to the AV41, which is our flagship AV processor in the our cam brand. Uh, you can see it's a finalist for best new hardware here at Cedia 2022. This is an update of a product that's been out for a little while now. So the AV40 is a processor that's been around for a while. 16 channel surround processing on it. It's a fantastic product. It's got our streaming audio engine in it. We do direct calibration with the products. But what we've updated in all the units for this year, these were announced earlier, February, March time frame on them, is we've updated all HDMI to HDMI 2.1 capabilities. Nice. So every input and all the outputs are fully uncompressed AK video capability on these now. The rest of the product is the same best in class product that we had before. So it's really getting an upgrade. So people that are looking for the ultimate performance of video can now get that with this AV41 platform. Now we stake that same platform. This is a 16 channel surround platform. So you can do up to 9.6 channels for your surround. And then the top model AVR, which is right here, this is the AVR31. It's the same product, but it includes our G-Class amplification in it, which is one of the highest performance uh, amplifiers that you can put into an AVR. Gotcha. Now, we do very well with these products. These are really the highest performing AVRs that you can buy on the market right now. And this is the top of the range here. This is about $6,900 for this guy. Right. Again, 16 channel, direct life, uh, room calibration on it, streaming audio, Dolby DTS, on All and on and on, on every checkbox you need to have yeah. for performance. So sure. these are great products. And then when we move down, so you want to have a little more affordable versions of the products when we move down in the range, we've got the AVR21. Okay. Uh, so this switches uh, the amplifier power down on it out of G-Class into a Class AB amplifier. So okay. it's still a great amp. Nice. Just not quite the ultimate performance we get out of there. It's really audiophile type sure. performance with a G-Class. Gotcha. We move down to the AVR11 here, a little lower power on it, and it drops down to a 12-channel platform. And then on the far end, AVR5 is the entry to the range right now. This one has not been updated. This one still maintains 4K HDMI capability in it. Okay. Uh, but this is a new price point that we introduced. People love the products. They love the sound. Price points were a little up there, but now we're at $2,000 is our entry level. So the AVR5 has been a great thing to do. And that's what these people are sitting here listening yeah, to right now. Yeah, I love it. Got the AVR5 sitting there with JBL HDI speakers. No surrounds in this application sure. here. Yeah. but Kind of hard in this setup. Yeah, great, great. This is still a great sounding system here. So got some people enjoying the sound of the Arkham AVR here with JBL HDI loudspeakers. Super cool. What yeah. else we got? Well, let's go take a look at a couple of the JBL architectural speakers and then we'll move over to synthesis. I like it. Let's do it. All right. Hey, so what we want to show you now, got a completely new range of JBL architectural speakers and wall and ceiling products okay. on here that bring tremendous performance for a remarkably high value price point in here. So this is a new stage two series of JBL loudspeakers. There are eight models in the range. And we put some of our patented technology and very high performance features that you would not expect at this price point in these product ranges in it. So we've got six and eight inch platforms in both traditional round and ceiling, okay. rectangular in walls. We've got two new footprints that are angled speakers. So the square ones 
have a, a driver configuration that's fixed at an angle. Okay. It makes it a great speaker to use for height channels, in-ceiling LCR, surround yeah. channels, anything like that. We got a dual tweeter, some mono speaker that you can do, and then we got the dual five inch LCR loudspeaker in here. And I think one of the things that people have been really impressed with this is again, the quality of the components that we put into these. So I'm gonna come right over here and I'm gonna show you guys the six inch in ceiling speaker so you can get a look at the caliber of components that are in this product. And I'm gonna let you take a guess here on how much you think the retail is on this, but let me show you what we got going on. We got a one inch aluminum dome tweeter with an acoustic lens, a little okay. bit of a waveguide around it in here. Six and a half inch polycone woofer uh, or polycellulose. And it's got a big motor structure on the back. You look at the crossover components that we got on here and some nice connectors so that make sure nothing comes loose once it's in the wall. Pretty high performance speaker in here and this is the entry level to this range. Okay. Uh, this guy is $150 each retail. Get out of here. So yeah. I was thinking like $399. Uh, well, yeah, All that's right. pretty okay. much what everybody's been okay. telling us, right? And we got a complete range of accessories in here. You know, one of the things about style right now, round speakers is what we've all been dealing with here in sure. this market. But our South American markets is where this square factor is coming from. Okay. And a lot of the higher end homes, more modern construction, where you've got square ceiling fixtures, square lighting, things like that. Up better with you it. want to have this to match up in it. So nice. we've got some adapter kits so that you can take this adapter kit and basically make this then a okay. square so in then ceiling it would speaker. Make it look like a square so, speaker. So yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So you got that in there, pre-construction brackets, all the stuff you need to do okay. a, a complete range of products in here. So these are tremendous value in there. And again, eight models, so any configuration you need to do from that. Yeah. From there, we step up into Studio 2, and you're gonna get a, a step up in the driver quality that's in here. You get a high frequency attenuator switch that's on here. This product range is a few years older, uh, but still current in the range. So we wanna show those off here. Again, you can see six models are in wall and ceilings, and we got a, a dual tweeter model as well as the LCR speaker. So your dual tweeter, I'm assuming, just gives a wider dispersion maybe? No, it's actually or? what you want to use for an area where you don't have the physical space to put a left and right channel speaker in, right? Uh, so you think about bathrooms or hallways or okay. any other place like that, you still want left and right signal, okay, gotcha. but you don't want to have to put in two speakers in that environment in there. So that's what these dual tweeter speakers really work well uh, for. Makes sense, makes sense. Yep. Okay. So, Taking a look over here, this is a new Studio 6 range of products. And so now, as you can probably tell by looking at these. We're stepping up a little bit. We're stepping up in performance <laughs> to a compression driver for nice. the HF section in here. These are only in-wall models in this case because that compression driver HF configuration is a little too large physically to put it into a traditional in-ceiling product. So we got five models in this range, six and eight inch traditional uh, rectangular speakers. And then the model that's in the middle there, that's a double eight. Okay. And then we make a double six that's the one flanking the TV that's on display here. And gotcha. then the top model is the quad woofer uh, theater model, is what we call that. So and on that's budget, an LCR, yeah. Output, so, you got small, yep. you got a larger. Now we're moving up in price point again when we get to here. And so we kind of got a good, better, best strategy that's happening yeah. in these products. Gotcha. Now, these are great speakers to put all around your house. You want good sound, you know, in the ceiling, the walls, anything in there. Sure. But these are a great way to put a hidden home theater system in your house. And we showcased at our office recently in this stage two product family, we put together a complete 7.4 system that was about $1,700 retail, wow. plus the subwoofers and your electronics still to go. But you know, if you're looking on a budget, you could put together an amazing sounding home theater for like $2,500 retail. Nice. So, and you wouldn't, honestly, you know, when you think JBL, it's like, okay, that can get on up there in price, which we're going to see, especially with some of the JBL synthesis. Yeah. So to be able to get this affordable, and a lot of you guys want or are looking for affordable options for home theater, definitely might be some things here that you're interested in. Yeah, and the performance is absolutely what you'd expect from JBL. They're dynamic, they're easy loads, yeah. they're, it's just a fantastic sound and loudspeaker. So now, you put all these <laughs> things in this, your dude. wall, right? Yeah. Now you think, I've spent all this money on my interior decor, I got a great looking house, yeah. and I don't wanna have all these yeah. grills all over it. As, yeah. as clean as these look now with sure. the zero bezel grills we put on them, it's still a grill yeah, on the wall. Yeah, you know it's a speaker. And you start thinking about, I got speakers on my wall, I got light switch on my wall, I got HVAC controls on my wall, you got all this stuff, we kind of call that wall acne. <laughs> right? You got a great looking house. Now yeah. I cluttered the walls up with all this stuff. Gotcha. Now the other thing you do from a design standpoint too is it's going to be a challenge. You know, you got, hey, the speakers should really go here because that's where they sound best. But from a design standpoint, they either can't go there because the chandelier is hanging there in a room or something else that from a decor standpoint, you can't put a speaker there. Gotcha. So the JBL Conceal Series, which is here at the top, 
So this is a completely yeah. invisible loudspeaker technology. Interesting. And what you're looking at right now is a fidelity glass panel that's on the front of this product okay. is really the diaphragm of the loudspeaker. Interesting. And what happens is, is you put this speaker in a wall, it basically installs like a drywall patch. Okay. So if you were doing repair, you cut out something, you put a piece in, sure. and then you're going to tape the mud and right. feather that in and paint it and it goes away, it looks like a new wall. That's exactly what you do with these loudspeakers. So let's come down here and show you what we got going on here with this. So this is one of those concealed speakers you just saw up there. We primer them in gray. They okay. paint them to match any wall color you want. And what's happened down here at the bottom is we got a piece of sheetrock down here. Okay. And you can see how you're going to do your traditional uh, drywall joints on these, right? Sure. So you're going to tape, you're going to mud, you're going to feather this in. And this speaker here, this bevel, right. is now where that tape mud is, and it's completely gone, right? Wow. You can't tell where the speaker ends and the wall begins. So when you've got something, you put it in a house, these are gone, right? right. You paint them whatever color the wall is. If there's wallpaper going up, I don't know who uses wallpaper anymore, yeah, but if you exactly. wanted to, sure. you could do that. Man, that's interesting that you can get sound through something like that. That's it's cool. phenomenal, that's right? Cool. It's a remarkably yeah. good sounding product. We partnered with Stealth Acoustics here. They had some patents on this technology and we took their designs, upgraded it with some JBL crossover technology, some tuning, and really, I think, made the best sounding invisible speaker on the market. Uh, and it just allows you to go into a house and you put speakers anywhere they need to be because visually, they're not there. And what we're seeing is that people are putting in more speakers and the coverage of this, you know, with this design, a little different than a traditional speaker, but you get about 170 degrees coverage pattern out of this. So you can really fill a space. When you think you're doing distributed audio around a house, you're really just filling the whole space with background audio. Gotcha. So what you're That's looking at on the back, there. yeah, I know, right? So this is what you're looking at on the back. So one of the unique things of how we do these, you see there's a traditional you know, cone type woofer that's in here. Yeah. So the C83 is the middle model. That's an eight inch woofer that's in there. Now what you're looking at up the top, so there's two actuators that are affixed to the fidelity glass panel on the front. Mm -hmm. And those are what's driving the high frequencies in it. So you're resonating that entire baffle. It's actually gotcha. a very small airspace that's behind that panel and in front of this woofer. So it's activating that basically the whole diaphragm of the front of the speaker, whereas sure. these are directly attached to it. And you can see we, then we've got a true, you know, high quality uh, crossover network that's in here on these products. Now they come with a back box and what you see here is we cut this back box in half so you can kind of see what's going on, but there's a wooden back box that goes with it. Right. And uh, these things just really bring great sound into the room and you don't see them. So this is a <laughs> wife acceptance factor of like off the charts. It is off the charts. <laughs> yeah, exactly what you oh, want. Oh man. These are actually, what you're looking at here, these are demo kits that we yeah. made because it's a hard That's concept cool. to show people. Yeah, that is You can super take cool. these into the store and connect them. They yeah, actually, show they're functional, the side. right? So yeah, you can connect these to an amplifier and do a quick demo for somebody in the store, Check show how they out. play. Now we've installed these in one of our conference rooms at the office. And we've got uh, the flagship version of this in there. And you take people in and they're like blown away. Like, where's all this amazing sound yeah. coming from? And they're like, it's the wall. And they're like, where? I don't see anything. Super, and until you move your hand along the wall and feel where yeah, the, the wall's moving, yeah. Yeah. you don't even know where they're at. So, nice. well, so this, this is, is kind of the, cool. yeah, this is a pinnacle of, you know, making this stuff disappear. Well, Jim, what else we got? I want to show you some JBL Synthesis products next. So let's go over oh, yeah. and take a look at those. So now we're over in the JBL Synthesis part of the booth, and there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about over here. So I think most of the people hopefully are familiar with their JBL Synthesis brand. Yeah. You know, one of the things that's unique about JBL for us is we're involved every aspect of content from its creation to its playback, no matter what the venue is in a playback. So when you have products that are created for live sound, for theater sound, we lead in those spaces and we use that same technology and bring it to bear in JBL Synthesis for our home cinema brand. So you think about movies are made and mixed, they're often done in the studios on JBL Synthesis products. Sure. A lot of the Blu-rays are mastered on JBL Synthesis systems. You go to a commercial cinema, you're listening to JBL in those cases. You're going to a live concert, you're listening to JBL. So we're kind of covered everywhere in there. So when you think about the whole point of these high channel count systems or even just the basic surround sound system is to recreate that experience of being at a concert, being at a, you know, uh, a sporting event, watching movies, gaming, things like that. So we bring that same technology there. Now synthesis, we know 
has kind of had a reputation of people saying, oh, I love it, it's the most amazing thing out there, I can't afford it. Right. So one of the things that we did here was we've created a new line of architectural speakers that take us down to much more affordable price points, but it maintains all that synthesis DNA. Okay. So what we've got happening here, four new products that are an expansion to the Synthesis Custom Loudspeaker line, and that's SCL 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. And so you're seeing them here, the SCL 5 and 8 are in ceiling speakers, the 6 and 7 are in walls. These just use smaller compression drivers than these bigger products do, but it's still a one inch annular ring diaphragm compression driver. Okay. Our patented high definition imaging horn designs on these. So if we take a look at the speaker you're looking at right now, the quad woofer SCL6, that's the largest of the models that uses the same compression driver these three little guys do. Okay. Uh, so that speaker can be a great LCR, it can stand up vertically, it can lay down horizontally. And then the uh, dual woofer version of it you see there has got an off-axis horn on it. That makes a great speaker that can be used for a width channel, let's say. Gotcha. Or side speakers where you're not necessarily directly off-axis of the listening position. So you want to have it a little ahead or a little behind. Sure. The other cool thing I want to show you about this guy oh, yeah. too is you take an installation like this here where you've got a TV and maybe right. a smaller type room, is that offset horn works it's well. Angled. Yeah, yeah so gotcha. the left and right works well, but if nice. you had to put it over a TV as a center channel, let's say, it's These now angled, angled down. down. If you had nice. to put it below the TV, it would be angled up. So it's a unique product in that, that it's kind of a Swiss Army knife. It can work in a lot of different applications for it. Now these in ceiling speakers, so this is the SCL8 down here. This is the smallest one. So again, these three speakers so we talked about are all well. the same compression drivers. But you'll notice this horn's pretty radical looking. Yeah, it's definitely different. And what we did is we know these are always overhead and they're always off axis. So what we created was a speaker that works well in Adobe Atmos solution, so height channels, anything like that, but it actually makes a great in ceiling LCR surround right. if you can't put anything in the walls. So this horn design is angled such that anywhere from zero to as far as 60 degrees off axis, okay. it is remarkably consistent performance in this product. Awesome. And because it's our compression diver technology, no dynamic compression at all, ultra low distortion, in this case paired with a five and a quarter inch woofer, the same as what we've got in these other three speakers. Now, these are traditional in wall and ceilings, no back box, anything like that. Okay. The biggest model we do down here in the range is the SCL5. So the speaker we just looked at, this is a bigger, beefier version. Right. So this uses a larger compression driver. It's still a one inch, but it's got a much larger motor structure on it. And it's paired with a seven inch woofer. So this speaker is really the one that we're using now for the height channel applications with some of the mid-range products that we have in the okay. brand. So if we take a look on this side of the room over here, the core of the range has been around for a couple of years now. Many of the viewers might already be familiar with the SEL 2, 3, and 4. Okay. This is the big guy out here. This was the flagship of the range up until February of this year. So the SEL 2 is an in-wall product designed for 6-inch construction. It includes an integrated back box. This now has a much more capable high-frequency section in it. This is a dual one and a half inch compression driver. It's gotcha. literally two one and a half inch so annular tweeter ring and range, I guess? Yeah, no, two it's two compression drivers firing out a common exit. So it's okay, a single so driver. But you got two diaphragms, two voice coils, two motor structures. So it's incredibly high performance. And we've made it up here with three eight inch woofers. And all of our synthesis woofers are advanced aluminum matrix cone technology. Very powerful motors. We use some Neo motors on some of the smaller ones because of the size of them, sure. and big ceramic motors when you get to these bigger guys. So the SCL2 here, beside it, SCL4. This uses a single one inch compression driver. Okay. This is the same compression driver we just looked at in the SCL5. This is literally the, the SCL5 in a rectangular box, right? right? This has a back box on it designed for four inch construction. And then if you just take this thing, if you think of it as a balloon and you squeezed it into a new shape, okay. you'd have the SCL3. Gotcha. So dual five inches, same compression driver, but it's in a square footprint now, which also pushes the enclosure out to a six inch deep enclosure on it. So these have been the core of the range for that. And then we've had matching subwoofers. So if we take oh, a look, yeah. I like can't, forget about, yeah, can't forget about the low I end like of the range. This. So we do dual driver technology in all of our subwoofers in a range. So we start off with a dual eight inch. 
If you take a look here at the left side, this is the SSW4. So this is where we began. It's a fully self-contained four-inch back box, so it's easy to do retrofit, dual eight-inch drivers on it. It's a passive sub, so you need an amplifier. And we made the new SDA 1700 being introduced here at the show. So that's a dedicated amplifier for it. So you take an AVR, you gotta have a powered sub to go with it. Well, the amp's gonna live here because the speaker's going in the wall. Now the step up from there is gonna go to the SSW3. Now we go to dual 10 inch drivers and you can see this is an even beefier driver. Sure. Big cast frame 10 inch in here, a very rigid uh, enclosure baffle that we have here. And this is designed for six inch deep construction, but it's still an in-wall speaker. From there, you go from dual eights, dual tens, dual 12s, right. SSW2, dual 12s. This is a monster of a 12. Gas I'm, frame, I'm, I'm four inch like coil. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that, that's beefy, right? Man. And this thing is super high performance. These 12s are in a uh, tuned enclosure with our patented slipstream port technology in it. This is a very robust cabinet, one inch construction, heavily braced inside. It's a beefy subwoofer. So is this passive or active? This is passive, okay. all of these are passive. Gotcha. So in a synthesis system, we're gonna use outboard amplification. It's typically not in the room. Gotcha. It's usually in an equipment yeah. rack, rack somewhere else. Yeah. And this guy can stand up like it is now, or sure. it can lay down. So you think about in your room, if you've got a screen, screen, you need to put them underneath the screen, yes. you can. If you got enough width, you can stand them up on the outside of the room and so do that. I could that. probably fit so. about four or five of those in the front. That yeah, absolutely, sweet, and people will line them up yes. that way. You can put four of them I underneath totally the screen. Line them up. Yep. Nice. So, as big and as high performance and as capable as these products are, we've still had people that said, the opposite before. Not the synthesis yeah. was too expensive, I but it was, like, where can we, we want more. Gotcha. We got bigger rooms. We're doing these high-end homes, sure. like what we've been seeing on the screen here. Yeah. And actually, uh, that good-looking guy that's on hey, the screen there right are, there. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a video we shot in the largest, most expensive house in the United States. Uh, and that screen's like 35, 40 Check feet wide out. that he's sitting in front of there. <laughs> So that's when you massive. start thinking about rooms that were that big, a lot of guys were using commercial cinema equipment yeah. for it, but that's not right for that type of system, yeah, right? Sure. They just weren't designed for those types of rooms. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So people said, hey, what do you got that's bigger, more capable? We want more bass, we want deeper bass, we want louder speakers. So we developed we some new product flagship products. Here. We got something to show you. Let's go up to the front of the booth. Jim, what the <laughs> heck do we have here, man? This is crazy. <laughs> So as we were saying, right, people were like, we're doing these bigger spaces. We need something more capable than what you had. As great as that stuff was, yeah. there's, it only fills, it's physics, right? You sure. can only fill such a big space. I get it. So when people ask for, give me more bass, give me more volume, give me something bigger, we delivered. So what we're looking at now is the new flagships of the JBL synthesis range. So I got right here behind me, SCL1, which is our flagship LCR, and the SSW1, which is our flagship subwoofer. So these were just introduced in February this year. And I think when people saw the press release on them, they're like, okay, that looks pretty good. Specs are good on paper, but right. you had no sense of the scale of these yeah, yeah. things because you couldn't see them in person. Yeah. Well, let's get a little selfie yeah, here, this, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. So we decided, you know, let's put them on the front of the booth here. Let's show it off. We're nice. right here at the front door on the main aisle. Lots of traffic. We figured this is going to stop people and go, what the heck are you guys doing? What do they got going on, man? So, now, we talked about those other three subwoofers, and I said we do dual driver approach in all of our synthesis subwoofers. So this is just an SSW2 scaled up. Gotcha. We put it on steroids. Sure. Big protein diet, now it's ready to go. Yeah. So what we've got now, dual 15s in this one. And you can see from the size of the rollage it's on these guys. These yeah. are like four inch peak to peak excursion, excursion. on them. Yeah, and yeah. you'll also notice from that size of the dust gun, it's a six inch voice coil on these things. Gotcha. And it's a ferrite motor structure it's on the back. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these out of a box to show you, but I'll tell you, the ceramic magnet on the back of this thing, which is a stack of them, about 12 inches in diameter, and it's more motor structure than, you know, five, six, seven, eight subwoofers that have just in this one driver, right? right? Now, we also have a lot of power. When you got a big driver like this, you're gonna need a lot of power. This sure. is a passive subwoofer, okay. but we recommend 2,500 watts per driver. So do two of them. So 5,000 okay, gotcha. watts of power to run one of these cabinets. Nice. Now with synthesis, we use subs in twos and fours. All right. So in our system that we have back in our office in Northridge, California, we just upgraded the whole LCR section to these SEL1s okay. and we've got two of these up under the screen. So we got 10,000 watts of amplifier power to run these two subwoofers. And 
this is a monster cabinet, right? This thing is all minimum one inch construction, heavily bracing. In fact, it's really two subs in one cabinet. Okay. So right down in here, these are our patented slipstream ports, but it disappears off into the side. This one's actually going to this side of the cabinet. Interesting. And when you reach in here, this one's going into this side of the cabinet. And each driver's got its own dedicated input in it. Because we know in the pro world, you can get a 5,000 watt amp, no problem at all. But in the consumer world, it's a yeah. little more difficult. Sure. We don't have the kind of power that you need to yeah. do it in the houses. But so a 2,500 watt amp, a little easier to get. You just need a bunch of them. So still going to be a beefy electrical system oh, to yeah. support these things. But yeah. in these big houses, that's not a problem, yeah. right? Now, now do you all make the amplifiers for this? Well, yeah, we make matching amplifiers okay. to go with these. Yeah, yeah. So. The other thing about this uh, product, so performance, right? Everybody's wondering, hey, what's the performance of this thing like? It plays unbelievably loud and it plays unbelievably deep. Okay. It becomes an experience oh, yeah. <laughs> when you have it. I love infrasonics, man. Yeah, that's what we get down to. So it's really tuned into the teens, but when you're in a room, you're gonna get low teens out of it. Sure. And that's not like, you know, 12 dB down, 20 dB down. Right. No, it's You're like significant output it's still got frequencies. significant output at that low level. And we experience in the theater work. I mean, you're in the back of the room and your pants are flapping. I like that. And the people sit in the room and you feel it. It's just concussive. And they're like, are there bass shakers in the risers? Yeah. No. no, moving air. <laughs> this is We're the bass shaker. Air. That's right the bass shaker is right. That's right. A pair of these guys up the front of the room. Nice. Uh, it's, it's large, yeah, as sure. you guys yeah, can see, absolutely. right? It's 54 inches tall, roughly. Sure. But the same thing we talked about before. Lay it down, put a couple Lay it down, front, stand it up. Put some in the back. Now we're, you know, about 22, 24 inches in each direction yeah. here, because we know that if you're in a big room, you're gonna have about that much below the bottom of the screen, sure. right? You're not gonna run the screen to the floor. Yep. So when you lay it on a the side, they work well underneath the big projection screen. We got a 15 foot wide 239 screen that okay. we use in our woven screen research. Nice. And this thing fits really nice underneath there. In some of the rooms, you know, you, you don't have height there, you got width. Mm -hmm. You go outside the screen and you're going vertically now. Right. I got height, gotcha. but sure. not a lot of width. So sure. again, the shape of this cabinet, stand it up on Either its way. end, flanking the screen, depending on if that's what you had to do. Or maybe if they were in the back of the room, yeah. same thing where you couldn't lay them down, you had to build them into some columns in the back of the room. So there's some flexibility in what you can do that. Sure. Anytime you're going to move this thing, though, you're going to want some help. Yeah, you better do all your planning ahead of time before yeah. you put this in place. Yeah, this thing's wow. about 350 pounds, give or take, uh, as she sits right here. It comes in a big wooden shipping crate that's over 500 pounds oh my per golly. subwoofer. So this is for people that want some serious bass. Yeah, you right? want to pay the extra money for the white glove so they can put it where you need it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Jim, this so. is quite interesting too. I mean, this is. Do we have amplification at the bottom? What's happening no, down no, there? No, what no, is no, no. DSP? So, yeah, so all again, these are all passive products because we use outboard amplification mm -hmm. in these. You're going to have a rack of power amps in an equipment room that's outside of the sure. theater space you're in. This is our big flagship LCR speaker. This is called the SCL1. So everything we talked about on those end wall products back there scaled up even bigger. Mm -hmm. So that monster subwoofer we just talked about here, this is the LCR that's going to hang with it. So what you got here, this again, our patented compression driver technology. Now we're scaled up to a dual three inch. So this compression driver has two three inch annular ring diaphragms, two voice coils, two motor structures. It's all firing out a common exit. Gotcha. That's a patented JBL compression driver. This is also patented horn geometry that you have in here. This is what we call high definition imaging horn geometry, all developed in our Northridge engineering facility. And this crazy shape that you see going on here is That's the most wild. advanced horns that we've done. And a lot of the geometry down here, I call this the pinchy stuff to be technical the about it, right? Stuff. So when you get it. down into the throat, this is all done to eliminate throat resonances. It's one of the, uh, the most common causes of distortion in a horn loaded loudspeaker is the throat resonances. So instead of okay. the sound coming straight out, it starts bouncing around inside the throat. Makes sense. So we've come up with some geometry to help eliminate that then. And then as you see, as it moves out, into the horn and into the exit of the horn, out of the mouth, into the exit of the horn. So sure. it's just a much better horn geometry, the most advanced that we've ever put into a product in here. Now on either end of that, I got a cast frame 12 inch woofer in here. And one of the cool things about these, again, this is a passive loudspeaker, right? You see the slot loaded port at the top of the product. This is what we call our sea bass. Okay complementary base alignment system in here. So each of these 12s is in its own enclosure and they're tuned differently in order to make this a very easy load for an amplifier. So 
the guys that are technical know about the impedance curve of a loudspeaker and how it changes depending on frequency in there, but you typically are going to get a peak somewhere in its response. So what we've done is basically eliminate that peak so that this is a very smooth impedance curve on it, but it makes it a very easy load on an amplifier. So as big and as capable as this is, it's not something you're going to need a huge amplifier to drive it and make it do cool things. Gotcha. But if you want to put a monster yeah, amplifier on it, it, it'll take it, right? Nice. So when you do a system like these, the weak link in the room becomes the soft humans inside yeah. the room <laughs> on how much SPL you're for willing sure. to take. So this would be great for like LCR, I would imagine. This is designed as screen. an LCR behind awesome. a big screen. Yeah, yeah. So again, we've got behind that 15 foot screen, we've got three of these standing yeah. up vertically. And then we got our screen height channels above it. That'd be crazy. So, when you think about how these are going to do, you, you're getting into now, we're into big cinema spaces. We're into high channel count systems, sure. advanced, you know, people want to do more advanced uh, electronic crossovers and things like that. Right, so gotcha. you were asking what's this yeah, panel this down here interesting at the bottom, down here. right? I'm like, what is going so on down here? So there's a cover that's normally on this. Okay. There's a the cast aluminum cover that comes off. We took it off from the show so sure. people could see what's going on. So we got an attenuator switch that's here in the middle and you can select this depending on where the speaker is positioned. Okay. So we had it set right now behind a screen. So you. if you know this behind a perf screen or a woven screen, nice. now we got some attenuation dialed in for the performance so that no matter what this is behind, right. you start putting material in front of the speaker, we're changing its yeah. performance. So we've compensated it for it with this control. Super cool. The other thing we've done down here is these uh, plates that are in here, you can switch these around and change the configuration on it so that if you want to do a standard single-ended input, okay. just connect one channel of an amplifier to it, you can drive this. Again, it's an easy load to drive. Sure, gotcha. So, but if you want to do by wire, by amplification, and right. we can change the straps to configure okay. that. But if you want to take it to the next level, that's all still using the internal crossover network. Gotcha. You so can configure this now this? to bypass and go straight into the driver. So that would be like an active. And use outboard active crossover networks, out. which we do in our bigger systems. Sure. We got anechoic curve preset into the processor. You're going to do that electronic crossover network. Right. Obviously, it's going to be a higher level performance than what you can do with a passive crossover network with capacitors and resistors and a speaker. As great as this crossover network is, and this yeah, speaker sure. is unbelievable performance in sure. its normal state, but you can take it to the nth degree when you start to do something like that. And these are the things that you know people are asking for really ultimate type yeah. performance from our products. Sure. This is what we created to deliver on this, and the response has been off the chart. There's a number of systems around the world that have already been installed with these. And in our own cinema in the Northridge office, people have come in and are like, I didn't even know this was possible to have this type of performance sure. in the system at all. It's better than the movie theater that we go to. It's better than anything I've ever heard. So. Oh, man. Well, I definitely want to come and make a trip, another trip, to hear something like of this caliber, <laughs> yeah. either at your office or in somebody's home theater. Absolutely. That looks impressive, man. Absolutely. All right, so we talked about all these amazing JBL synthesis loudspeakers. The other thing we got happening here at the show is we got two demo rooms to yeah. showcase how these products scale up. So in this room that's here behind us, We'll get you in and have a look and listen at that room in there. That is the SCL 6, 7, and 8, which are those entry-level models okay, that we so talked about. Okay, so we looked at that earlier. Yep, we looked at that. That's based around one of the Synthesis AVRs, a new subwoofer amp, the in-wall subs that we got going on in there. So that showcases where we can really start now. Okay. This particular room, it's 7.4 in there, uh, four subwoofers uh, sure. on the bottom end of it. And that's about a thirty thousand dollar room. Okay. So that's much more affordable than where we've traditionally been in a synthesis system. Sure. On the other side over here, another room we want to get you into. Okay. So this is our bigger synthesis system here. I would say it's a medium size, but it's still a big system. It's nine dot six channels in there, okay. four subwoofers again, and that's about an eighty thousand dollar room. Gotcha. And that's I think where a lot of people think about where we live sure. with synthesis, and they don't think about hey, we can put something together that's way more affordable there. And then you scale up to the bigger rooms. That system that we got in our office is a quarter of a million dollars for the audio. Wow. That's <laughs> so insane. that's where we scale on the other end of synthesis. And so we talked about all those loudspeakers. And what we're actually standing in front of now is all the electronics. Nice. Because synthesis is a complete turnkey system. We don't really sell products. We sell system solutions in okay. here. Everything is designed and engineered to work together as a system out of the gate from the way the products are developed to how they're installed and calibrated into the room once it's all said and done. And we do that. We help all the integrators with how you specify the system. What's the room going to be like? Where do the things need to be positioned into the room? And then once the system's installed, we go in and help with calibration. And all JBL synthesis systems are calibrated to our Harman target curve. Yeah. 
So we have that guaranteed level of performance in terms of how things are going to sound when it's said and done. Matter of fact, we've just introduced JBL Synthesis Certified Systems Program this year. And we've done that for both our dealer partners and our end user customers so that you know if you've got a synthesis certified system that it meets our strict standards of gotcha. performance, not only from us and equipment, but also from the integrator. That the guy you bought this thing from knows what he was doing. Sure. He's the best of the best on there. And it also gives us a way that we can identify those partners on the dealer and integrator sides that have invested in putting one into their showroom, that we can highlight them on the website and say, right. this is a place I can go experience sure. this. Synthesis is not something you can just tell somebody about. What right. you want to do is put them in a room and let them hear the system. Crank and up. that's what that certified program is going to do for us. So the electronics are really the heart of all these systems. They're the part nobody ever sees because they're hidden sure, away in a the rack brains, out the there. Guts. Yeah. That's what makes it work. We talked about big power from amplifiers. We use from our pro side of the business, the, the uh, JBL Professional DSI 2.0s, the SA4 and the MA4 which is a big, beefy, class D power amplifier that we sure. use to drive the subwoofers gotcha. in the medium to large scale systems. Okay. On the middle shelf, we got our G-Class amplifier. G-Class amplifier technology, also used on our Arcam brand, but it's a very high performance amplifier that operates in class A for the majority of the time you're listening sure. to it, but the power, right. it's got two sets of rails on it, yeah. is what happens. So you, when you need those bigger power draws, sure. second set of rails kicks in and you got much more power than you would a traditional low power class A amp. Right. So we got a uh, two channel and a seven channel amp that we have in that range there. Okay. The two channel amp can bridge to a thousand watt monoblock. Yeah. So a lot of people use that for LCRs too. Sure. And then about three of these and then bridge them maybe? Put, yeah, yeah, put three of those bridge and let those drive your LCRs behind the screen. So. And then we've got our AVR. It's the first time we've done an AVR, and that's one of the things now. You know, traditionally you've done a separate surround processor, and you got to have all these outboard amplifiers in order to drive, you know, 12 channel, 16 channel, whatever you're doing on audio. Sure. But a lot of people are still doing these seven channel systems, or you know, 7.4. This has got seven channels of G-class power built into it, okay. so it's a real high performance AVR. It's probably one of the most expensive AVRs in the market, but in sure. a synthesis system, what you're really getting is the absolute state-of-the-art performance. Gotcha. So this is 16 channels of processing capability in it. It's got our high-performance DAX as a step up over what we do in the, our CAM products. We have Dante connectivity for those types of integrators that want to use digital connectivity between the products in it. These come with Drac Live, including the uh, uh, base control in them. Yeah. So it's not something you have to pay for not out of the box. It's hundreds right. of dollars to do. Sure. It's just included because we know Every synthesis system is going to have a minimum of two subwoofers. That's part of what we do to minimize the seat-to-seat -seat variation and sure. bass response, yep. right? So in addition to the AVR, we make the processor version of it, pluck out all the amplification sure. because you're doing a bigger room, you need more powerful amps. So these two products are identical. This is the SDP-58, that's the SDR-38. These models are new over their original versions, the 55 and the 35, because these have been upgraded with that same HDMI 2.1 video board that okay. we have in our cam. So you got 8K video capability. Sure. And then for the ultimate performance, oh, yeah. we still have the flagship piece down here. This is the STP 75. So we developed this uh, is a partnership that we did with Trend Off Audio. So this is based on the Altitude 32 platform with a bunch of of uh, features that are added okay. specifically for us for JBL Synthesis that tailored to our systems and our performance. Yeah. And that uses the optimizer EQ rather than the Dirac in here. And these are what would be available from 16 to 32 or even out 36 channels of audio and are part of the certified elite systems that we do. Because these get much more complex to design and install and much more complex to calibrate. Yeah. So we've set those as a notch above. You got synthesis certified, you got synthesis certified elite gotcha. that lives above that, and that's what would be in here. So Jim, you have got like pretty much everything covered, man. This has been quite the experience. And so I love the products that you've got. I love the value that you bring. Some of it is really high end, and so for those of you who got that big budget, get the big bad boys and then invite me over and we'll do a home theater tour of it. That would be fun. <laughs> But guys, we are doing some awesome content like this here at Cedia 2022. Jim, it has been a pleasure, man. Thank you, sir. And so we're going to be coming back. I'll catch some video of kind of when the lines uh, <laughs> get the lines down. die yeah. down a little bit. Then, yeah. Then we can come in and we can kind of hear this because I would love to hear these systems. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Let play. me give you a demo. Awesome, guys. Well, I hope y'all have an incredible week. God bless. And we'll catch you in the next video.